The Epicurean Wood Series by Douglas Lang. Welcome to another weird and wonderful whiskey review by Whiskey Whims with me, Stuart. Today we're looking at Douglas Lang's The Epicurean. Um, and this is from the wood finish series on The Epicurean. And this is cognac from a, a single cask cognac. Um, Douglas Lang, um, established in 1948. Uh, I don't want to go into too much about them because I think we all know Douglas Lang and what they do, but they've got the Remarkable uh, Regions series, which uh, includes the uh, Epicurean, which uses Lowland malts. It has Timorous Beastie, which is Highlands, Scallywag, which is Speyside, The Gauldrons, which is Campbelltown, um, Rock Island, which is the Islands, and then Big Pete, which is Isla. So we've got the Epicurean. Uh, like I said, it's cognac uh, finished, it's no age statement, uh, no chill filtration, no added colouring, and it's bottled at a, a healthy 48% ABV. The Epicurean, as I mentioned, is a um, blend of lowland distilleries. doesn't disclose which distilleries. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not too clued up in Douglas Lang in the sense of whether or not they reveal these distilleries on the sly or not, but I don't know what distilleries are used in it. Um, as you can see, it's got a nice kind of golden hazy colour there, um, but yeah, no added colouring. Not had a lot out of this, but I needed content from a weird and wonderful, so I thought I'd review it. Uh, if it does change throughout the bottle, I'll come back to it and re-review it, um, because I, I feel like usually it's better getting maybe at least halfway down a bottle before I review it. But anyway, it's one of only 402 bottles and yeah 1948 is what's on the bottle so that's when um, Douglas Lang was established. I do believe that they're a relation to uh, Hunter Lang, um, I'm not sure if they were, they were brothers, um, Fred Lang and uh, or was it Douglas and someone, anyway I think they were brothers and they, they split the company. Uh, I might be wrong. Anyway so we'll get down to the whiskey itself, we'll get down to the tasting notes and see whether this weird and wonderful finish is a, a whiskey win or a whiskey bin. So I think you can pick this up for about 55 to 60 pound and it's not too bad for what you're getting. It is a blend but I think blends are starting to become a lot more popular um, but it's not bad for 48% uh, no added um, colour and or chill filtration so you're getting quite a um, transparent whiskey. There's peach definitely on the nose, there's like an apricot, uh, lychee, I want to say um, brioche buns, I'm not sure how they make brioche buns, if it's just they add butter or something because they seem quite buttery, but anyway there's brioche buns, possibly a little bit of ginger, there's a kind of spice there, and um, Sandalwood, it's um, quite woody. It's a really nice nose to be honest. I reckon the more time I spend with this, the, the, the more I'll find on the nose. There's, there seems to be quite a lot going on. I think this is my first Douglas Lang as well on the, uh, the channel. Like I said, I've done Hunter Lang before. Um, but I've had quite a few uh, at festivals and that, different types, uh, like the Timorous Beastie and that. I've had, I believe, Rock Island uh, 21 year old, I've had the Timorous Beastie 18, um, and then the standard core releases from the uh, Remarkable Regions at festivals. And they're all quite good, they're, they're, none of them are, I would say is terrible. The only one that kind of was a, a bit of a miss with me was the, the Gauldrons. But I know they're different batches, so I might have just had a bad batch. Anyhow, um, there probably is a little bit of maybe cut grass there. We'll get down to the uh, the palate. Mm. For forty eight percent, it's not too bad with regards to um, alcoholic strength or anything like that. 
there is a little nip and once again that, that kind of grass cut grass is there the nips right at the front of my, my tongue and from what I believe uh, or understand that I've been told is if it's uh, if you get like a kind of nip at the front of your tongue it's young if you get a nip in the middle it's a little bit older and if you get a nip at the back it's even older quite old stuff so anyway I'm getting a nip at the kind of front of my tongue the middle so I think this is possibly between five seven um, year old I mean you could go a stretch to say it might even be ten but yeah the the cut grass and the the kind of nip uh, is alluding to that it might be a young whiskey um, it's quite fresh though um, once again there's kind of fruits the apricot for sure Mm. There's orange, and just because it's cognac, I'm going to say it's um, orange soaked in cognac. Yeah, let's go with that. It's orange soaked in cognac. I've never had orange soaked in cognac before, but let's just say that's a thing. Uh, there's orange. There's possibly a little fig, uh, but I might just I might just be a. Uh, clutching at straws here. I think there is a little fig. I think the nose for me here is uh, a lot better than the palate. The palate's still nice, uh, don't get me wrong, but the, the nose is just, yeah, I can smell that all day. Um, The finish. Hmm. Yeah, it's quite a fresh, fruity um, whiskey, actually. The apricot is quite quite um quite dominant quite juicy almost it's like having <laughs> a juicy apricot um yeah so the finish the finish is quite long there's definitely a lot of oak influence in the finish there's quite a it's not really bitter but it's quite dry in oak uh quite woody and there's maybe a little bit of ginger spice there as well um, I was <laughs> going to try and start singing a Spice Girls song but they've all went out of my head and I'm a terrible singer uh, yeah there's definitely like a ginger spice that kind of lingers towards the end there's pear drops there um, and yeah it's quite woody the finish is rather um, dominant with the wood or with the oak but it's not to say those other flavours are getting uh, overlooked uh, like the um, ginger has still got that kind of presence, a little spice, and the pear drops for me uh, is, is quite quite relevant. <laughs> so this, um, I mean, I've not, I've only just got past the neck pour. There's probably been about four or five drams out of this. Uh, it's probably not the best time to review it, but it's, right now it's definitely a whiskey win. Uh, I think it's worth, say, 55, 60 pound. I don't think it's worth any more. I think it's a great, great price. Um, it is a blend, so maybe that helps bring the price down. But uh, it's not exactly fancy packaging or anything. I mean, they've obviously spent a little bit of time on marketing with the uh, the actual the kind of real labeling and the brand of the Epicurean. But it's nothing too fancy with regards to packaging. It's presented quite well. It's quite transparent. It'd be good to know which um, low end whiskies go into it, or at least a couple. I, I assume. Um, well, I can't assume. I actually don't know what was what's going into this, so uh, I wouldn't want to assume. But I think no, I'm not going to say anything because I I, I can't um, reasonably guess what would be in this whiskey. It would just be a, a kind of stab in the dark. Um, but yeah, for me, a whiskey win. I definitely uh, recommend it. Whether I buy it again or not, uh, I probably wouldn't buy it again. Uh, I did get this gifted to me for my birthday, but it's nice. But I'd like to explore more of their, their kind of series or their wood finishes. So I wouldn't go for this again. I would recommend it. And yeah, I think it's worth the price. So thanks for watching. I've been Stuart. It's been Whiskey Whims. I'll see you later.